Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is our basic battle belt setup. Stand by. All right, guys, we're gonna talk about the battle belt setup. This is one of the projects I've been doing. If you watched my last video, about the Ranger Handbook Survival Kit and doing some spray paint and camo. This is one of the projects I've been working on, just setting up a basic battle belt for defense, going out, planking targets, keeping up with basic skills. Like last week, you can see we painted up our mags and some of the spray paint got on the table here. Don't worry, this is my wife's table. On a completely unrelated topic to the paint on the table, if I happen to go missing next week, uh, send help. So why are we talking about a battle belt system in a bushcraft and survival channel? Well, one, to change things up, two, to show you different things that I've been working on, and then three, as a level system to reinforce the methodology from last video. If you watched the last video, the Ranger Handbook and Survival Kit, we saw three levels of survival. This kit can be worn as a standalone item or in addition to our front rack or plate carrier with our primary weapon system or with just our primary weapon system, but it still gives us a level of defense as well as the ability to engage a threat, defeat it, move away from that threat, or wait for reinforcements, or go resupply, get our main kit. Besides all that, shooting is a survival skill. One of the best training events I've ever gone through was in a simulated downed aircraft or downed air crew survival event where we actually had to use our primary weapon system, the rifle, as well as our secondary weapon system and ammo to move from the wreckage of a downed aircraft, shoot targets, and then move back in buddy teams, bounding back cover to cover until we finally broke contact and moved into an evasion scenario. Very high stress environment, great training, and it just reinforces the fact that shooting and being able to shoot and aim properly, engage targets with your weapon system is a survival skill. All right, so let's talk about our battle belt really quick. First thing is, we have a heavy duty buckle in the front with two pins. You have to depress both to actually get it done. We want this as part of a battle belt, especially metal, so it doesn't break apart on us if we're moving and maneuvering while engaging targets. We want something strong that's gonna hold in place. Plus, this is incredibly strong, so somebody could put a cord or a wrap around the belt and drag your body out of the danger area just to get you back behind cover. So some sort of strong belt with a strong buckle is paramount. So we open up the belt. Now the first thing you'll notice is the pad inside. Some guys run with this, some guys don't. What you're gonna hear me say a lot in the video is that it's shooter preference, shooter preference. Typically, the units I've been in, SLP is to have at least the IFAC centrally located in the back of the belt somewhere. We can find it easily. But with the pad inside here, this gives us extra padding as well as grip. This is rubber inside here. And that means with this extra padding and the rubber, it's gonna sit on our hips really nice. It's not gonna start to slough down like some of these do when they get sweaty or they get loose. We're not gonna have to constantly tighten this thing. The inner padding is great. We have that stability, a little bit of extra comfort. It's not gonna be rubbing up against our hips and it makes for a better all around wear. Plus, we can rip the whole thing off, put it up, and if we don't want that, we can attach this thing to another one of these if we're already wearing it or to a different belt. Or we can just take it back out and then put it right back on our kit and it's right there in place for us. All right, let's flip it over. All right, since I'm a normie and I'm right-handed, this is set up for right-handed shooting. So the first thing on the left-hand side of the belt, closest to that buckle, is gonna be our ammo. We've got two double pistol mag pouches loaded, ready to go. There's little clasps inside all these mag pouches that hold these things in place. So if we turn it upside down and try to shake it out, it's not going anywhere. So we got those two pistol mags. We got one primary mag for our primary weapon system. Fully loaded, ready to go. Beautiful camo job. And again, another clasp in there. Closest to the front for ease of access and reloading. Next is that IFAC, that IFAC individual first aid kit centrally located in the back of the belt for ease of access. There's two tabs left and right hand side, and we can pull the IFAC out either way. If we have one hand that's injured or we can't reach it from one side for whatever reason, we can grab it from the other side, pull it out, and begin treatment. We've got chem light holders up top, or you can put a chem light if you want. And then we have our tourniquet up top, easily grabbed from our dominant side, a little hard to get through 
this bungee cord on the opposite side just because of the locking bar on the tourniquet. So something to be aware of. There's another way we can set this up and I'll show you in a second. But we can take that IFAC, pull it out. There's two tabs right here on this version anyway. There's a lot of different IFACs for shooter belts. This, all we have to do is grab one, pull it the other way, grab two, pull it away. And then we just fold this open and we have our basic blowout kit inside. Just a Israeli bandage and combat gauze on the other. This is just a basic blowout kit on top of that tourniquet. We could definitely put a lot more things in here if we wanted to. Chest seals, NCDs, MPAs, whatever we want to put in our little IFAC we can. And it's got a nice little button in here with a few more bungee straps where we can put other items. We fold this back up using the bungees again. Secure that IFAC to itself. We even have a strip of Velcro right here. We can actually put something on there if we wanted to. And then I just prefer to tuck these in and then I'll turn it over with the straps closest to the belt itself and not sticking out so they could be grabbed on something. You actually have to grab this and pull it out closest to the belt and then just shove it through. Take the tourniquet and put it back up top and shove it in there as best you can and then tighten that down and your IFAC's ready to go. Now we obviously have to have the obligatory fixed blade as part of our shooter's belt. This could be on just our belt that's on our uniform, but a way to carry this is a technique. I put mine behind or underneath the IFAC with zip ties, and then I can grab it with my dominant hand, get it out, use it for whatever I'm doing, and then put it back, put it in place. It's right behind that IFAC, so somebody, if they came up behind me, would have to find that and actually reach in there, so it's kind of protected. Plus. It's very deliberate with the dominant hand pulling that out and it's behind there where it's gonna be comfortable. I don't like wearing fixed blades on a shooter's belt because they stick up and down that belt. So I'm gonna get jabbed probably in the butt and then get jabbed up in the lower back as I sit down, especially with a plate carrier on. And so I just prefer that horizontal carry. But again, shooter's preference on how we put knives on shooter's belts. Any method will work as long as it works. Again, like the old adage, if it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. Next, just a small utility pouch right here on the belt, dominant hand side next to the pistol. This is just a small utility pouch. Again, with the clasp on here, that's really good to hold things in, especially small things like multi-tools or flashlights. Closest to the dominant hand so we can grab it when we need it. This is up and down, just like we talked about with the fixed blade knife, although this is shorter, so I'm more comfortable with it being up and down like this. We could turn this pouch sideways and lay it on the belt itself. But there's just not enough room right here. And so we gotta kind of pick and choose how we're gonna set this thing up. Again, shooter's preference with whatever we do. You'll notice that it's close to the pistol. When we stand up and actually put this belt on, it will rotate out. That way, this pouch does not interfere with the actual draw of the pistol or the function of the pistol. So we'll be able to get to it, and this pouch isn't gonna affect it that much. And then next, pistol. So we have just a cheap civilian model Kydex pistol holster. This has a grip inside, but there's no lock on it. So we can pull it out and then put it back in. The downside to this is that if we bump it down here at the muzzle, it'll come up. The plus side is there's no lock where we have to put our fingers so we can just draw and engage and then put it back. So give and take, this is just a model that I like. One thing I recommend, or at least this is my style, is that I don't like having long drop leg holsters. There are some holsters down there that will sit down on your thigh. I don't really like that. I want the holster up closer to the belt, closer to my center of gravity so it's not banging and clanging around on my leg. Secondary weapon is set up closer to the front of the belt on the right hand side now. Once again, because I'm right handed and this rests exactly where my hand rests as I'm standing up. So my hand rests naturally over the holster, over the pistol, so I can just grab it really quick, draw and engage. And then it's got a small leg strap to go around the leg, a little bit high, but good enough to actually provide some stability. Plus with this, we can remove this holster. It's not really belted into anything. All we have to do is reach underneath and then simply pull up. And now that holster, the weapon, everything is free if we wanna put this on our waist. Now, now on the topic of taking the pistol and the holster off our battle belt. There's two basic setups that I like to run. One is having a setup like this where I can just take this holster, 
put it on my belt, on my pants that I'm wearing without the battle belt, and then just walk around with this, or having a smaller holster with the lock itself, that we use this lock on the holster and actually get the firearm out. It locks in place and I can't grab it, can't get it out, with just a waist clip. This portion right here goes inside the pants, fits right over top of the belt, locks in place, and then we just have that kind of high carry around the waist with our pistol or our firearm. So those are two carries. Then just to get the same pistol holster back on, as you see the clasp right here, just go in between the actual belt and then that padding from the beginning of the video. Simply find the clasp, hook it over top of the belt, slide it down to about where we had it, make sure the Velcro is sticking and it's back in place. Now I prefer to have the ability to take the holster and the weapon off of the battle belt itself and then put it on and wear it without the battle belt. Also having a secondary holster for our pistol to go into, wear this, dump this if we don't need it for whatever reason. But having the ability to take this off gives us that ease of access just to transition on and off the belt. Very easy with this setup. And especially with the clasp, back here we have the ability to actually move the holster up and down the belt because it's not hooked into anything. There's no Velcro on the clasp at all. And so we can move it forward, we can move it back, make those fine tune adjustments for how we're going to position this weapon on our battle belt for ease of draw, ease of access, build that muscle memory, and then begin to engage targets, put rounds down range, and make it a lot easier for ourselves. This is something I prefer. Again, shooter's preference. And then one last thing at the front of the belt, right before our secondary weapon here, is just a carabiner with shooting gloves. You can put anything on here we wanted, obviously, but a utility carabiner that carries our shooter gloves, very well-worn shooter gloves. And so we have just that ready to go with part of our battle belt. All right, so that one technique I was gonna show you with our tourniquet, we should probably have one or two of these, one in our uniform that we're wearing in a pocket, then one that could be on our battle belt. A technique is that we can actually take this tourniquet and place it on our belt using just rubber bands. Sorry for all my uh, paratroopers out there, airborne personnel, container bands. As a jump master, always uses proper nomenclature. Take a rubber band, place it over top of the belt and behind. We can tie this into place very easily. Same thing with the front, one more rubber band. Put it over top, twist, wrap around that tourniquet. And we could have those in place. Now we have that tourniquet horizontally with our belt going along, parallel with our belt, right at the front, down in front where we can actually grab this tourniquet on our front in our workspace next to this ammo on the left hand side so we can grab it with our non-dominant hand as well as our dominant hand because it is in front of our belt. And we can just pull this thing off, grab our tourniquet and apply that tourniquet to that catastrophic wound to ourselves or to our buddy if we have to. All right guys, a basic battle belt setup. The only thing I think we're missing from this, maybe besides a few more chem lights or some sort of signaling device, is a magazine dump pouch back here in the corner. A magazine dump pouch is just a small pouch that folds up, break it open, and you can throw all your empty magazines in that pouch so you don't have to deal with them and they're not in your cargo pocket. Although I have thrown them in my cargo pocket and ended up with quite a few empty magazines jingling around, banging around in my pocket at the end of the day. That's the only thing I can really think of to go in here, but I hope you guys like this video. A very down and dirty video on the battle belt system. Again, it's another level of survival, especially for law enforcement or military personnel. Great system, especially for home defense, as well as anybody who are practicing shooters out there that go out and hit targets. A great setup. This is a basic loadout, the basic things that we need to have for a battle belt. I really hope you like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate you guys' feedback. I want to thank you guys for what you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.